Carol, hello. Hello. We meet again. We do. Um, now, normally when we talk, it's, it's usually about an album or, or a tour or something to do with music. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to talk about your autobiography now. Yes. Um, and I was wondering, because having spoken to you in the past, you've always struck me as quite a private person. Yes. And I was wondering, was it a tough decision? Because you're, you're very, very honest in the book and there's mm -hmm. lots of stuff that's, you know, quite personal about your past. Yes. Was that a tough decision to, to write that stuff? I mean, it was, it was a... a a battle with myself, how I how I normally am, because I am a very private person. But I just took enough of of everybody else's rubbish, you know. I'm sick of reading lies. I'm sick of reading misquotes. And enough was enough. It was time for me to put out my side of the story and the truth. And if I was going to do it, I was going to do it honestly and frankly and truthfully, and not beat around the bush. So once I made the decision, I knew it was going to be frank and open and. It was the best thing for me at that time. Okay, Set, setting the record straight. Yeah, sure. just yeah. you're just putting all the rumours to bed, and I, you know, I'm, I was just tired of everything being rehashed. Everyone yeah. having a misinformed opinion on who they thought I was, and it just felt like the right thing to do. Great. Okay. And um, one of the things that comes across very strongly from the book is that you had a, a real kind of burning ambition to, to make it from a quite a young age. I was just wondering, where do you think that came from, and you know, what, what drove you on? S well, I was performing from a really young age, from a little baby really. I was three when I started taking dance classes, so I always really enjoyed performing. That was that was more the thing than anything else. I just couldn't see a future of doing anything else. I didn't like school, if I'm honest. I always just loved performing. That's where the passion came from. I wouldn't say driven, burning ambition to make it. I would have probably settled for performing in any capacity just I knew that's what I wanted to do in my life. Okay and um, I'm glad you mentioned school because that relates to my next question. One of, one of the funny bits in the book you had a, was it a maths teacher that said Gerald Tweedy you'll amount to nothing. Yes in life. often. Well it just goes to show how much teachers know doesn't it but um, <laughs> I was just just wondering you know how did, how did you cope with with knockbacks and people not having faith in you? Did, did it affect you? I mean, my dad was always like that too, you know. Mm. He was always the one saying, get your head out the clouds, you know, this is ridiculous. Yes, it's a dream and I understand every teenage girl wants to be a pop star or... Mm. But I just knew in my heart that's what I was supposed to do, so it didn't really affect us in that way. It was more like, okay, cool story, bro. That's yeah. your opinion, but I'll do it. And I said to my dad one day, We'll be watching Top of the Pops and I'll be on there. And we did. How and you'll never forget. You I think like eight or nine. Right, okay. So, bit of a good prediction then. <laughs> but um, I mean, there's enough negative people in the world. As, uh, you know, as you know, there, there are lots of people who are willing to sort of say, you know, forget it, get your head out of the class, yeah. that kind of thing. But, so let's talk about a positive person. Yes. Um, someone who's been a big positive influence in your life and your career is Will I Am. Yes. Um, and there's a quote again from the book where at one point you say to him, I think you believe in me more than I believe in me. Yes. Um, why, what made you say that and what's, what have you learned from, from Will? Well, being in a girl group for so many years, until I went solo, it was like seven years we were together, you know, you're surrounded by friends and it's like a comfort blanket. Mm. It's you and four other people, not just you alone. So that's what I meant by Will. It was in terms of going solo. Mm -hmm. I hadn't considered it before he actually planted the seed. So he could see in me what I hadn't seen yet. And I've learned a lot from him. He's a very, very wise character. Mm. He's been in the industry, obviously, for a long, long time. He's seen a lot of people come and go. So I just trusted his instinct and his opinion. and. Yeah, I've learned a lot from Will. Great, okay. And my final designated question is, um, <laughs> you're obviously, as, as I'm sure you know, you're, you're a real inspiration and role model to young girls and, and young women who, um, well, full stop, but particularly ones who want to kind of get into this business. If you, what, what advice would you give to, to a, a young female who wants to follow in your footsteps? I mean, it really is amazing to think that I once was a person looking for someone to inspire, to aspire to be like and now I can be that person for somebody else. That's a really special feeling. But my advice would be that you need to know this industry inside out. You know, it's not, it's not the red carpets and the parties and the glamour that you say. It's really hard work and it's, it's a dedication, you know, it's a lot of sacrifice and a lot of dedication and you have to be sure that this is what you want to do with your life and I would say practice 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 you can't 
ever practice enough. Great. Well, Cheryl, thank you very much for that. Thank you. you.